which takes me right on into what I want to talk about today. And um, I want to talk about the importance and the privilege of knowing God's word um, or being familiar with the word of God. Um, why is God's word important? One, God's word is fully sufficient to prepare us for everything the Bible instructs us to do. Two, the Holy Spirit uses the word of God to transform, not change, but transform us into Christ likeness. I said the reason I said not change and stress the word transform because when you're transformed, I was taught this a while back by one of our ministers, when God transforms us, we can't change back. When you're changed, when you're only changed, you have the ability to go back. It is fully sufficient for life and truth transference. And three, we study to transform ourselves. Mm -hmm. Psalms 119 and 119 and 105 reads, your word is a lamp to my feet yes. and a light to my path. Mm -hmm. When we are lost at a crossroads, not sure which way to go, God's word is clear that he will direct our paths. But we have a responsibility. Proverbs 3 and 6 says, in all of your ways, acknowledge mm -hmm. him and yeah. he will direct your path. Our responsibility is in order for God to be able to direct our path, we have to acknowledge him. How mm -hmm. do we acknowledge God? We get to know the word. Yes. The problem is we pick and choose which parts of our life we are willing to listen to, to surrender to our Lord. Because we only give God part of our life or promises, or because we only give God part of our life, as that scripture says, God can only direct our path in those parts of our life. Yes. The full promise cannot manifest itself in our lives. If we only give him certain parts of our lives, he will only direct that path, as I said, for that part of our life. Could it be while we are not experiencing the fullness of God is because we are not giving God the fullness of our life? Oh, okay. <laughs> there have been many times I've looked for scripture and tried to apply the word to the situations circumstances and different seasons in my life. Mm -hmm. Now y'all know I am not a, a Bible scholar, but I do believe the word. Amen. There have been two major times in my life now, the recent valley my family just went through and is still coming out of. And when my daughter fought for her life after the car accident she was involved in in 2006, I remember, y'all know this story, some of you. I remember at both times realizing that there was nothing or no one I could depend on except the word of God. Mm. I had to go to God in both instances. But I realized just the other day the significance of knowing the word of God. Yes. I realized that although many times I have pulled on scripture, I have prayed to God, it was this incident most recently that a light came on and I realized if I did not know those scriptures, if I had not known the word, if I had not known that I could have called on God at mm. those two parts in my life, would the situation have turned out the same? Mm. The word and my belief that God will do what his promises tell us he will do is what has given me the strength, the direction, and the peace to get through these times. I understand now the importance and the privilege that comes from knowing scripture and more so 
believing that the scripture will do what it tells us it will do. Um, Proverbs 3 and 1. Let me read that. Y'all, I have a lot of scripture today. I tried, to, with that. I tried to, some of it I had ready, some of it I don't. Let me see here. Proverbs 3 and 1 reads, it's a common scripture, but I want to make sure I'm talking about the word. I want to make sure I give the word to you like it reads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 3, 1 and 2 says, my child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfying. Knowing the word at a drop of a dime or at very important times, I had seconds to call on God when my husband collapsed. I was hundreds of miles away from my daughter. All I could do was try to remember what the word said and his promises. I needed something to fight with me against this attack. I knew I did not have the power to fight this fight alone, but I knew that God could. I knew I could call on the power of God through his word that could and would fight this battle for me. Mm. I believed God when my daughter was in the hospital. I remembered scripture that told me that I could dispatch angels to a place in, uh, for me. In Psalms 91 and 11, it reads, we know this scripture, it's a common one. Let me get to it. And y'all, I'm gonna read the full, the full scripture of Psalms 91. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He mm -hmm. will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Mm -hmm. Do not be afraid of the terrors in the night. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the most high your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They yes. will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. Yes. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I yes. will protect those who trust in my name. Uh -huh. When they call on me, I uh -huh. will answer. Yes. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and yes. give them my salvation. Thank you, God. So I called on the angels to dispatch to my daughter. I called on Psalms 91 when my husband was fighting for his life. Mm. I remembered that the word says he will protect us from deadly disease. Mm. I remember that the word said that if I call on him, he will answer me. When my yeah. husband was on the floor and I was giving him chest compressions, I remembered those words. If I call on him, he will answer me. Thank you, God. I expected the power of the word to work. I expected God to open the door when it was locked because he said that if I call on you again, mm. he mm. will answer. Mm. I'm at amazement with God because I have no explanation how that locked door got unlocked. Right. But I believe it was God because I called on him. 
He mm. told me that he will protect me and answer me. Thank so you. I don't need to know how the door opened. All no. I need to know is that God did it. Amen. My faith has increased even more. Mm. James 1 and 2 tells us. Y'all pray for me that I get through this. Amen. Get to James, thank you. If y'all get to James first, if you don't mind reading it for me, I would greatly appreciate it while I'm looking for it as well. All right. I'm here. I thought I had James 1, it says, I'm going to start at 2. It says, dear brothers and sisters, I read this scripture on Wednesday. When troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So mm -hmm. let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Thank you, God. If I can look at my trials or if we can look at our trials as an opportunity for our faith to grow, we can look at it as a time to not only learn something, but realize that going through a trial is not a punishment from God. Amen. Going through a trial is an opportunity for your faith to grow. Yes. The word says, so let it grow. I realize now that it is from the past trials that I was able to be okay as I walked into another trial. All right. I realized again that my faith was growing. Mm -hmm. I realized that from the past trials that my faith grew, that I could call on God. He would do what he said he would do. He would be where he said he would be. And all I had to do was trust him. Mm. Psalms 91 says that those who trust me, I will do what I say that I can do. Yeah. So I've learned to take a trial. I'm losing my place here. I've learned to take trials and I, excuse me, I've learned to take trials as a time to not only be humble before the Lord, but also to appreciate the privilege of my faith being able to to grow. Yes. Romans 8 and 28. I'm getting there. Yeah. Romans 8 and 28 reads, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Yes. If we understand that every incident in our life, the good, the bad, and the ugly is mm -hmm. working out for not only your good, but for the good of those attached to you, for the good of those who have persecuted you, for the good of those who are around you, then mm. you will be more willing to allow the processes to take place. You mm. will learn to be humble before the Lord instead of trying to fix things yourself. And oh. instead of trying to tell God what and how he needs to do and work out the things in our life. Mm. But we can understand that all things are working together for our good. Mm -hmm. We won't know these things if we don't know the word. Amen. We won't know that in order for the word to be active in our lives, we won't know these things if we haven't taken the time to study the word. We will constantly be in a place of frustration when we feel like we're being picked on when things come at us that we don't understand. We will constantly be in a place of anxiety when we don't know that the word tells us to be anxious for nothing, but instead pray for everything. We feel like because we are people of God, some of us at times, let me reword that, some of us at times or all of us sometimes feel like 
when we are going through things that we are either being picked on, that it's something that we've done wrong, that is something that we're suffering for because of someone else around us has done wrong. But what we have to understand is that when all of these things are coming together for our good, that this is not mis that this is not haphazardly happening. God yeah. knew that these things would take place before they did. We just have to be ready and know the word to be ready to prepare and go through it. Mm -hmm. Numbers 23 and 19. Where am I at? Mm -hmm. God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Yeah. I'm going to keep reading. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has mm -hmm. he ever promised and not carried it through? Uh huh. Many times in my life, when my faith was wavering, I remember saying to God, Lord, your word does not lie. Amen. Lord, your word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When we know that the word does not lie, that God's promises and commands do not change, that his word remains the same. When we know that the word, we can apply it to every circumstance in our life, then are the times that we can experience the peace that surpasses all understanding because we know the word. We yeah. know that it does not lie. We know, according to Jeremiah 29 and 11, I should have given y'all some stuff to read with me. Scriptures. <laughs> Deacon Alex got you. He's putting all the scriptures in the chat. He oh, got you. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. And I think I know that one. But again, I'm talking about knowing the word. So I'm not mm -hmm. fixing to not know what I'm talking about when right. I say the word. If one of y'all get it before me, please feel free to read it. For I know the plans I have for yes. you. Thank this you. is the Lord's declaration. Yes. Plans for your welfare, not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Yes, God. You will call to me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Amen. So when you know that the word does not lie, when you know that the word does not change, regardless of your circumstance, when you know in 29 and 11 that God has a plan for you and that plan is a plan of hope, a plan of prosperity, and a plan of long life. When things come your way, you can again walk in peace. We don't know these things if we don't know the word. Mm -hmm. But because God knew his people would still struggle at times mm -hmm. to use our faith, to depend on his word, he knew we would struggle to, to, to use our faith. We would struggle to at times not depend on his word. We would struggle and get caught up in the ways of this world. He told us that if we only have faith the size of a mustard seed. Mm -hmm. then we can move mountains. See, God knew that we would struggle. So see, our faith does not have to be huge. Our faith by God is not determined by the amount. Our faith is simply that we have it. Yes. God said we can move mountains Amen. with the size of faith of a mustard seed. When you do not have... To I'm, wait, I lost my, my place. Your faith does not have to be huge, but you do not have to know the Bible from back to forth, but you do have to simply believe God will do as he says he will do. We cannot please God without faith. He didn't give faith in a size, an amount that we had to have. As I read this part, he just said that we have to have it. 
We need to know that there is power in the word. Yes. When I think, sorry, y'all, excuse me. When I think about the power utilizing, when I think about the power opening itself up, you don't have enough faith. Jesus told them, amen, amen. We have to realize y'all that there's power in, uh, in the word of God. When Philip was in the hospital, every text I received, every phone call I got, and the same was with Tamika as well. When everyone would ask me, how was he doing? My response was, he is well. I remember scripture that says, let the sick say they are well. Yeah. Even with my husband having two blood clots in his lungs and blood clots in his heart, I didn't listen to the report of man. I listened to the report of the Lord. Yeah. How is Philip doing? Philip is well. What are the doctors saying? They said this and this, but Philip is well. When temptation comes your way, and we know the wages of sin are death, that might make us think, y'all, I'm sorry, I'm losing my place. My, my vision is blurry from when I was crying, from when I keep crying. Okay, let me back up. I apologize, y'all. When temptation comes our way, and we know that the wages of sin are death, we might not believe it but we know it. Mm -hmm. We will then know that scripture says in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. Let me go to Corinthians 13. If y'all get there before me. Here we go. 1 Corinthians 13. Ten and thirteen. Okay, sorry, I was at the wrong spot. Ten and thirteen. Huh? Yes, yes. Uh, New Living Translation. Oh, let me let me read. Yes, you can see me, Philip. Excuse me, y'all. The temptations in your life are. Let's see. If you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you may adore. How many times in our lives have we had to face temptation? Mm. Have there been times in your life that if you knew that the word is clear, that it tells you God will give you an out. Mm. God will also, the word also says that the wages of sin are death. If we knew that the wages of sin were death, if we believed it, if we knew that there, why would we, why would we take the risk of sinning or, or falling to temptation if we know that the wages of sin is death? Yes. These are the times in our lives that if we are being tempted and we know that God will give us an out, we could call on that word. Temptation is real. We all deal with it. Yeah. But if we have the opportunity to walk away or we have the opportunity that God will open a door, we could, we could hopefully save ourselves and our family the pain that we can cause by the wages of sin, which equal death. If we knew when we were lonely that God said that he will not forsake us, if we knew when we were dealing with anxiety and depression and Philippians 4, 6, and 7 tells us for be anxious for nothing, but instead pray about everything. If we knew when we feel like we do not have a friend that God calls us his friend. If we know that when we don't know what to pray, we know that the word tells us in Romans 8 and 26,
27, 20. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we did not know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. Mm -hmm. How many, amen, how many times have we felt like we didn't know what to pray for? How many times did we start to pray and gave up because we thought our prayer was not worthy? Romans 18 and 26 reminds us that God will be an intercessor for us. Yeah. That when we don't know what to pray, he will be the intercessor and will know what to pray for us. Right. The spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray as we ought but the spirit himself will intercede for us, our tongue. If we know in the word that there's power in our tongue, then maybe we will not say some of the things that we always say. If right. we do, that Proverbs 18 and 21 tells us, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. If we know the word, then maybe we wouldn't say certain things. If you know that what you say has the power of life over your life or death over your life, you would be more careful about the things that you say. Part of our problem is that even when we know these things, we don't believe it. Mm. So we walk around saying that we know God's word, but it's still not working itself in our life because we don't believe the word. If we knew when we were sick that God says by his stripes, you are healed. If we knew that God healed the man of leprosy, that he healed the woman with the issue of blood, that he raised Lazarus from dead, from death. If we knew that we have the same power in us that God used to raise Jesus from the dead, we would take advantage of that power. If we know that when we are going through in our marriage, that there are 50 or more examples of scripture in the Bible, in New Living Translation, the study Bible, I counted it. There are 50 examples of scriptures that you can go to, to talk, to talk to God and to grow strength in your marriage. If you knew that the word says that if you are trying to get a loved one or a spouse to come to know the Lord better, that the way to do it is by you setting an example then you might have a different outcome in your marriage. If you knew that when you were going through disappointment, that God has scripture there for you. If you knew that letting go of your past, God has provided scripture for you. If we know that in all our relationships, if we know that in our finances, if we know that God tells us how to deal with others, if we know that when we're walking through the end times, the answer is in the word. You need to know where to find these things when you're going to, you need to have these things in your mind and on your heart so that when you're going through things, you know how to handle it. In closing, I mentioned to you guys earlier that if I had not known the scriptures that I knew to call on at those two points in my life and the many other times that I've called on the scripture, if I had not believed that God would do what he says he would do, when my situations have turned out differently. God's people, please know the importance of knowing God's word. Please know the privilege of knowing God's word. I encourage you to get a Bible. I encourage you 
to figure out what type of learner you are. I say that because you might not be a typical learner that when someone is preaching to you every Sunday that you understand and retain the word. You might not be the kind of person that when you go and read the Bible in a book that you automatically understand what you're reading. So what I'm saying to you is this, find out how you are able to learn the word the best. The way that one person learns the word might not be what will help you retain the word. I looked in my Bible, this Bible, the study Bible that I have. And in this study Bible, y'all, I'm through, I'm through preaching. I'm talking about something else now. In this study Bible, I saw that there is a 365 day reading plan. There's a master index. There's an index of charts, an index of maps, an index to the personality profiles. I saw that there's a dictionary and a concordance in the Bible. What are some